For this assignment, you're going to create a useful links page, and it's going to be links to whatever you're interested in. Mine's programming stuff. And I see an error in it. Let's fix that. OK. So we're going to take a look at a few things in CSS and a few things in HTML on how I made the page. I want to start by talking a little bit about CSS. I've got my CSS at the top of the page. I don't really like this shade of purple, so I'm going to go pick another one. I want a purple, but I want a dark purple. So I'm going to go in here, hit Enter. It'll put the code in. Then I can put my semicolon in and save. And let's, there we go. Dark purple, much better. Now i using purple here. Let's go ahead and copy that code. Or I'm using purple here. So you can use color names or you can use the code that comes up that's considered a hex decimal code. And so now my colors are purple, ivory, and red. That'll do. All right, let's talk a little bit about the different things that I've done. Now, I'm not totally in love with my font family here. And if you put a new font family at the body, it carries through. So I don't didn't design that. And this gives you a whole list. I'm just going to say, please pick something sans serif. That generally is the easiest to read on the web. There we go. Everything's a sans serif. That means it doesn't have the little lines at the edge of the letters. All right, so I have I was playing with stuff and I didn't actually need that. So I've got my background color. That's here. This is the body background color. And I've set the font family for the entire page because everything inherits it. So everything now has a sans serif font. This is called a class. When you work with a class in CSS, you define it with a dot and then the name of the class that you gave it. And so I split my page into something with a div. A div is a di just a division. It's a box. So I basically made a box in here. My box has rounded edges, but it's still just a box. And so my container is a box. I've set the width of 960 pixels. I've set the background to ivory. I've put in a three pixel solid red border. And you have to name things in that order if you put a border. The width, the type, you can have solid, you can have dashed. You can have dotted. You can have double. That actually is not bad. I think I might leave that. Or you can have solid. Border radius of 10 pixels is what puts the curves in my corners. Padding, that's an error. Padding should be like that. So you padding, and it shows you top and bottom when I'm only using two values, top and bottom are the same, and left and right are the same. So I have 10 pixels of space assigned to the top and the bottom. And from the sides of the page, I'm saying that they need to leave 30 pixels. And then my margin is 5 pixels. That's between the margin of the box and the top of the page. And auto centers it so that if I make my page bigger or smaller. Now, the width is set here, so my container doesn't resize. But the page is always centered in the available space. So that's what the 5 pixel auto does, auto centers it. I've defined the color for h1, h2, and h3. That's an h1 tag. That's an h2 tag. These are h3 tags, but they're also links. So the color doesn't matter. The link color overrides those. I have my H1 and my H3 text align centered. This is how I'm styling my links. Links are anchor tags. I've made the color dark red. I've got the text decoration of none because normally links have underlines. Mine are set to only underline when you mouse over. I've got text align left. Again, I was playing with something that broke that, and I don't actually need that. It doesn't actually do anything. And then I've got padding top and bottom of 5 pixels and padding left and right of 15 pixels because I wanted it tabbed in a bit from the heading above it. Now I have a colon hover. 
that gives me the specific state. When a mouse is hovering over the anchor text, and I've set that simply to red, and I've set the text decoration to underline. So you can see each of my links, when you hover over them, will underline regardless of where they are on the page. So those are all the styles that I put in. Now let's talk about this class container. I have a div, which is just a square. Divs are all squares. We're just putting in squares and we can put content in the squares and we can put squares inside the squares and we can build things like we're building with blocks. So I'm only using one and I put the entire content of my page inside that container. And to make that class, all the styles apply to it, I have to say class equals container. Now I can use multiple classes on any page. I can use them more than once. So if I wanted to, I could have a container here for the top. And then I can actually close that div. And then only this part's in the container. And so I could do a different, I could add multiple containers. So I can add div class equals container. And then I can close it before the next heading. And you'll see that we'll do a different container for each one. I'm going to do that really quickly for the rest of them. And I'm just going to fast forward the video so you don't have to watch me type. Okay, so you can see I can use that class, which styles them each the same way, and stack containers on top of each other, and then they just get a five pixel border between them because the top and bottom collapse when you stack them on top of each other. Now let's look at what I've done in here. Now these are just placeholders. You'll do real links here. The top actually takes you back to the top if you click on it. This is considered to be a bookmark. It will make your page go up and down. So if I go to mobile programming, it will take me to where I can see the mobile programming. Let's talk about how I did that. Each of these H2 tags, image resources, here, this is my H2 tag, I gave it an ID. The ID gives me a specific place on the page that I can link to. IDs have to be unique. We can have the same class over and over again. IDs, you can use as many IDs as you want, but each individual ID can only be used once per page. So they can only be one programming ID per page. That lets me make a link to that spot. When I'm linking to something on the same page, and you can see here I am doing a placeholder, all of my links that say link are actually just links to the current page. The, they'll take you to the top if you click on it. Oops, that one's an error. Hmm, not sure why it's doing that. I must have not coded one of them correctly. I'll have to check my... Oh, yep, that one's missing my little hashtag there. When you link to something on the same page, use a hashtag and then you use the name of the ID you're linking to. So we're linking to web design, we're linking to 
image resources, this hashtag says we're linking on this page, and then the ID. So when I click on programming, it will go down to programming. When I click on top, it will go to top. I have an ID called top right here inside the useful links. And you usually just add that to a paragraph or H1 or a link tag. You add the ID. This is called a bookmark. And it lets you link to a specific spot on the page. Now we've already linked to external spots and we're doing that here for these three. three W3Schools, lynda.com, and Google Web Fundamentals. That should be an apostrophe S. It'll give me an error if I do that. So I'm going to want to look for the HTML code for an apostrophe. This is considered an ASCII table and symbol. So I want the single quote. So this is my code for putting that in. And that will turn into the correct character in my useful links page. So now you get Google's with an apostrophe S. You just need to look up the ASCII code. Now when I open these, they open into a new window. So my useful links is still open, but the W3Schools opens in a new page. That's the standard way in web development of opening something to a new page. And you do that by adding the target equals underscore blank in your hypertext reference. So I will put up this code for you to see. It'll be linked to from the assignment. And make sure that you right click and view the page source if you want to see how I coded it. Now this is done in my Adobe Preview so you won't see these copyrights in here because this is the device preview. So you can ignore all this script stuff. But you will be able to see my source code once I've uploaded it to the web and put the link into Canvas. So this is your sample, but you'll need to actually program the other links. And you don't have to do web design image resources programming. Anything that interests you. It might be useful links for cooking, and you might have baking and desserts, or you might have useful links for, or for bands that you like and have information on those, rock, country, whatever. So useful links, you need four different categories. Each one needs to have three links, a link back to the top, and then you need to link to each of to the, those four categories from the top of the page.